This is Pastor James, and welcome to another live stream worship service. We are so thankful that you are here as we finish up our series entitled Church in the Wild. Uh, I just want to let you know of a couple of announcements that are, that are going on right now. First of all, I wanted to let you know that we are planning tentatively to return uh, to Sunday small groups on uh, on June 7th. Now, what that looks like uh, will not be... Um, will still be different. We're, we're not going to be going back to full normal yet. Uh, what we were planning to do uh, is that we will meet in one large group, but we will meet in the bigger room so that we can spread out uh, and still socially distance and make sure that we are uh, keeping, uh, keeping our distance and staying safe. Um, but in addition to that, uh, what we would ask is that when you come in on that Sunday, uh, just Im immediately go to to, the, to that room. Uh, we're not going to be opening up the game room or the cafe. We're going to make sure that we are uh, still gathered in one place, but also socially distanced so that uh, we can be safe uh, instead of uh, spreading germs around uh, and that kind of thing. But that is scheduled for June the 7th. That is not this Sunday but the Sunday after that. So we hope that, that you join us. Uh, as far as youth is concerned, once again, uh, we are planning to, to meet uh, as, as normal in our normal uh, youth worship services in August. Uh, we are, uh, the plan right now is that Forge in Fuego will be the last week of, uh, of July. Um, and then we will uh, uh, use that kind of as a jumping off point uh, into our new year. Now, once again, I have to say this, uh, we are, uh, all our schedule is basically month to month. So we have that tentatively on the calendar, but things can change. Uh, we want to just be uh, loving our neighbor uh, and also respecting uh, the authorities as, as it says in Romans 13 and first Peter uh, and first Peter 3 as well. Uh, we don't want to be renegades and just doing our own thing. We want to make sure that we are wise in how we are making the next steps in our um, in our church life. So we are looking back to uh, opening up. Uh, at that time, so uh, if um, we, we're also going to be planning to, to, to do some things during the summer, we are uh, going to just kind of um, uh, try to work with different things uh, instead of doing the same uh, same pattern that we have been doing. We want to make sure that we're uh, still uh, being relevant, that we're still uh, reaching you guys and um, and ministering to you, you guys. Because if this uh, if this helps uh, and this is something that you feel connected with, we want to keep doing that. So, uh, but right now uh, I want to uh, pass it over to uh, to Pastor Stephen uh, as he leads us in worship. Uh, we just want to again start off uh, this time in worship and teaching and being uh, with God uh, this week. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father God, we thank you for this day. God, we thank you for this ability to live stream. God, I pray that, that you will do a work uh, in the students that are watching. Uh, God, that you will keep us focused. That, God, that we will be pointed uh, uh, to your throne. God, we thank you. We love you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
you high
a good barbecue place. I mean, a really good one. Like one that when you walk in, you kind of just get the vibe like, oh, this this place has good barbecue. And there's, and there's a lot of different barbecue places that have a lot of great uh, different methods and a lot of great uh, types of sauces and, and ways to cook. But one thing that stands out among a lot of these barbecue places is that they take time to prepare the food for a long period of time. It, it, not just not just like, hey, we're gonna really prepare for an hour, but they really prepare throughout an entire uh, entire day almost to get one dish right. You can see this in the way that some uh, uh, meats are smoked. For example, if you want to eat a beef brisket, probably you're gonna have to wait 12 hours for that for that beef brisket to cook properly, maybe even 20. And even ribs, even they, they're not the same as, as, as a beef brisket, but it will take probably about six hours to really smoke and get the juices right on ribs. It takes time when you're cooking something to make sure that the uh, meat is cooked to perfection. In fact, this isn't just true with barbecue. This is also true with steak. In some places, you can dry age a steak to make sure that the flavor and the preparation is, is correct. And, and we, we would just probably buy a steak from Publix, but you can go somewhere where they have dry aged a steak for 30 days and people will pay top dollar for that kind of meal. In, in food preparation, we know that there is uh, a lot to be said for waiting a, a the perfect amount of time before something is cooked to perfection. And we see that in, in life, that when we wait, when we display patience, we can see rewards at the end of it. You know, we, we live in a society that wants to speed things up. We it's, It started with the microwave of trying to get things as fast as they can, but it also is it's in our social media. I mean, we, we uh, send notes immediately on social media and expect replies immediately. We, we don't really have patience when it comes to how we interact with each other. We don't have patience in, in a lot of things. And so to, we, we expect things to, to happen fast. We don't like to wait, even for good service. Have you, have you been feeling the same way with your faith? I mean, the, the thing is that we, we look for shortcuts all the time in, in how we uh, interact in our lives. So we, we look for, uh, for shortcuts in, in food prep. We look for shortcuts in, in our driving. We look for shortcuts. We want to make sure that we are efficient. We want to make sure that we're fast. But sometimes shortcuts aren't always great, especially with our faith. And you may be frustrated because you've been dissatisfied with your spiritual journey. And it's not because that you, you've you've been doing the right things, but it's maybe because you feel that you're not growing fast enough. And you just you've been a you, you started as a Christian at one point and you really just haven't seen the benefits of it yet. You really haven't seen fulfillment for a long period of time. And, and what I want you to know is that maybe, maybe you may have been saved at some point and, and you, you just haven't really felt that growth and you're wondering, I, I don't know why I'm, I'm not feeling it. And it might be because you need to work at it. You may, need to uh, put in the work, just like everything, like building, building muscle, just like healthy eating, just like all these things that are worth doing take time. Maybe your faith needs to be taking time as well and disciplining it so that you can get to the point where you feel comfortable. You know, we 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 look for shortcuts in a lot of things, and maybe you're looking for shortcuts in your spiritual growth. And I'm just here to say that that's not how that happens. In fact, you know, as I just said, you know, that maybe you want to get to a spot where you're comfortable, but what you'll realize is that there will not be a spot where you feel comfortable. You'll always need to be pressing on. And we want to get short. We just want to take shortcuts to uh, to our destinations rather than really put in the work. So tonight, I want to ask you a question: Are you trying to find shortcuts in your faith? Let's take the long road and take the real work when it comes to our faith.
If you have your Bibles, I want to invite you to turn to Matthew chapter 4. We'll begin reading with verses 8 through 11. We, we've been doing this series called Church in the Wild. Where we're looking at the temptations of Jesus. And what we're seeing is that Jesus really used Scripture and used truth uh, to help him out of temptations. Now, th these were actual temptations. They weren't, these weren't things where uh, Jesus was uh, um, like, oh, I'm, I'm too good for that. Je Jesus probably was tempted with these things just as we are tempted. But because he was in God's word, because he was uh, he had desires to uh, fulfill the Father's mission, he was able to fight off the temptations. And that's what we see, that we saw last week that Satan told half-truths, that Satan lied. But Jesus showed him the truth that is God's word, and he fought off the temptation. So today, we're going to look at the last temptation that Satan gives Jesus. And what this temptation is, is a shortcut. What this, this temptation is, what it, the reason why it's a temptation is because it looks like a shortcut. And Jesus has to fight off the shortcut and look for the better way to serve the Father. So let's look at verse, verses 8 through 11. It says, Again, the devil took him to a very high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and their splendor. And he said to him, I will give you all of these things if you fall down and worship me. Then Jesus told him, Go away, Satan, for it is written, Worship the Lord your God and serve only him. Then the devil left him, and angels came and began to serve him. We've been going through these temptations, and we can see how we can follow after Jesus' example. And then this temptation, this is a real temptation. Jesus is, is being tempted by Satan to take a shortcut. But to understand why this is important, to understand why this is a shortcut, we have to really look at what the mission of Jesus was. Because Jesus, throughout the New Testament, will we'll talk about why he came in the New Testament. So, so for example, Mark chapter 10, verse 45, it says, For even the Son of Man came not to be served, but to give his life as a ransom for many. That really describes very well, in a nutshell, of what Jesus' mission was for, the, for our church. For the church, was it, Jesus came to serve us, to save us, to give his life for us, to conquer death, and to give us hope in him. But the mission of Jesus was to be a servant for us. To who, the mission of Jesus was to be a servant for us and lay down his life by saving the church. And the death of Jesus would be a sin offering where God would pour out his wrath on Jesus that for the the sins that we committed would be placed on him, and God would put his wrath upon Jesus. And the death and resurrection would not just be good news for us, but it would establish God's kingdom and give glory to the Father. Now you may be thinking, isn't God the creator of the world? Why, why does Jesus have to go through this to establish his kingdom? Well, remember what happened in the Garden of Eden? God gave Adam and Eve a freedom to do what they want when it came to uh, eating the tree, tree of uh, eating the fruit of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. They had a choice whether to obey God or disobey God. And in this, what they decide to do is they decide to disobey God. And instead, instead of being in perfect relationship with him, basically they severed the ties so that no longer are they in unity or they in fellowship with God. And when Adam and Eve chose to sin over God, that affected our spiritual DNA, and we were given over to Satan. In, in 2 Corinthians 4.4, 4, Scripture explains that Satan has a hold on people, and, and, and that his influence on people has given him power in this world. Satan may be a defeated enemy, and, and believe me, Satan is a defeated enemy, but God has delayed his impending doom and allowed people that have rejected him to be led astray by Satan. This is, again, the will of God. God is allowing this to happen, but Satan does have some power. Satan does have, have uh, uh, some sway in, in this world, but only what God allows him to do. And so what it says here in 2 Corinthians 4.4, 4, it says, In their case, the God of this age has blinded the minds of unbelievers to keep them from seeing the light of the gospel of the glory of Christ, who is the image of God. So I, 
I know that's a lot and there's a lot of theological things and you may be like, oh, I just, I, I don't get that. Let me just kind of explain it this way. The nature of sin allowed Satan to have some control in the world we live in because we decided to go away from God. God allowed us free choice. God allowed us to walk away from him. And because of that, Satan brings us in. He, he, he brought, brought human, he, came in and he took uh took captive souls he, he was uh because people rejected god they turned from god to satan and and the coming of jesus was the victory over sin that allows people to come to the father in new relationship so although that satan had these captives although satan had blinded or uh, blinded us to the truth of god god's victory over sin through jesus saved people from sin. It, it, it brought the captive free. God physically took uh, from Satan. He, 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 took, he took us back from the enemy. So what, what is happening, all this explains what's happening in this temptation. And again, if you're if you're lost, I'll, 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 it's okay. We'll, we'll we'll try to sum it up in in a little bit. But this this temptation is that Satan is saying to Jesus, "Hey, what you're about to do is you're about to go to the cross. You're about to save these people. You're about to establish your kingdom on earth. What if you didn't have to go to the cross and I just surrendered it all to you? What if I just gave you?" What is mine? What if I just gave it back to you? And here's the thing. It, it was about to be Jesus. Jesus was going to go to the cross. He was going to conquer death. He was going to conquer the grave. He was going to do all that. But what Satan was saying is, you don't have to do that. I'll just, I'll just give it up. I'll give it back to you. You don't have to go to the cross. You don't have to experience suffering. You don't have to do that. All you have to do is bow down to me. You just have to worship me bend the knee and worship me now this negotiation is a sticky one because on the one hand satan is asking jesus to do something that is outright humiliating there's no way that jesus would want to do this there's no no way that jesus would just be tempted just to worship satan that's not the temptation jesus doesn't want to worship satan he he, he it's this moral enemy and, and satan is not deserving of jesus worship jesus has no desire to worship satan satan is not does not have any hold on jesus and for for jesus to worship him would be humiliating but at the same time, Satan is giving a promise to allow Jesus to be king, to establish his kingdom of the world without going to the cross. It's a shortcut, shortcut to the end goal of his mission. And shortcuts are tempting. But at the end of the day, some shortcuts aren't worth it. Shortcuts have consequences. Because if Jesus had obeyed Satan, the consequences would have been numerous. First of all, what we see is that Jesus would have been blatantly disobeying God. He, he quotes scripture and says uh, in verse 10, For it is written, Worship the Lord your God and serve only him. If Jesus had done that, he is no longer the sinless one who is capable of saving humanity. He is no longer sin sinless. He is no longer our hope for salvation. But there's another thing. If Jesus had obeyed, had obeyed Satan, Satan may have, have, have given over his, his kingdom. It may have, Satan may have, have told him the truth, but we know that Satan is a father of lies. And all this could have been for naught. It's very possible Satan doesn't keep his end of the deal. And Jesus would have sinned and it would have been all for naught. Shortcuts are short sighted and they can fail us. We can see the reward at the end at the end of it, but when we start walking it, we realize that it's not what we thought it was going to be, and all of a sudden everything falls to ruin. So, how can we avoid shortcuts? I want to uh, want us to conclude on this. How do we avoid shortcuts? Well, first of all, we need to be obedient to what God says. We need to be obedient to what God says. In Deuteronomy chapter 8, beginning with verse 1, God is giving the law to the Israelites. And he is giving the, the instruction of how they ought to live. And so he says this, 
Carefully follow every command I'm giving you today so that you may live and increase and may enter and take possession of the land the Lord to the, take possession of the land the Lord swore to your ancestors. What God is saying here is I'm about to give you the law. It is imperative for you to obey the law. It is imperative for you to to listen to God's instruction. And if you listen to God's instructions, then you will not be caught in sin. You will be uh, obeying God. You will be doing the right things. And in doing so, in doing so, you will uh, be you will find that that, uh, you will not have the consequences of shortcuts. If if you obey what I'm telling to you, it is not going to to give you the heartache from 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 that sin will. Yes, sin will will take you places that you don't want to go. It, 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 we we have a desire for sin, but what happens is that sin does not fulfill its promises, and we're left empty. But when we obey God, when we follow after God, we see that God has a purpose in mind, and that God wants to protect us. He wants to keep us safe and he wants to keep us from doing the wrong thing. So how do we be obedient? How do we be obedient? Because because first of all, we need to get in God's word because if we're not in the Bible, we will not know what God, how God wants us to live. We will not know the instructions that God has given to us. We need to be in God's word. If we are taken away from God's word, we don't know what it says. And God is saying, I'm going to hold you accountable for this. This is this is a word that you need to be in, that you need to obey. I want you to do this so that you're better off. But once we know what the Bible says, we need to fully obey and allow God to work in our lives. We need to go and be obedient. As James 1 says, don't just be hearers of the word, be doers of the word. When you hear instruction from God, follow after him. But the second thing we need to do is we need to resist the shortcut. We need to resist the shortcut. James 4, 7 says, therefore, submit to God, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. There's so many ways that Satan can lie to you about shortcuts. There's so many ways that, that he will tell us, hey, this is the right decision. Look at this. Look how pretty this is. Don't you want to go down that path? Don't you think that that will look good? But but here's the thing. It's even when it's difficult to make the right decision, Satan will lie and, and tell us to take the easy road. And although it looks like it's avoiding work, it looks like it's avoiding pain, taking the shortcut will give us consequences in the end. Like, for example, you know, we, we tell you to, to, to wait until marriage to, to have sex. And I know that like it, there, there's, our world does not, does not agree with that. It's just like, you, you need to, you need to make sure that, that you're compatible with someone and, and uh, intimately before, before, for marriage. And, and what, what happens is that leads to, to heartbreak and downfall. The, taking the shortcut and, and pursuing a sexual relationship before marriage is is not uh, is a shortcut that will lead to heartache. It will lead to emotional brokenness and spiritual brokenness. And maybe maybe it's even simple as as, as googling answers to a test and cheating. Like you, it's 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 taking a shortcut, but it's not doing yourself any good, and, and we're not being truthful to our teachers and before God. It, it may it may be you know uh, taking um, uh, when when your friends are, are talking and and, uh, and and saying the things that they probably shouldn't say. Uh, it, it may be easier to, to join in and laugh, but but taking a shortcut is 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 joining in with them. But but to walk away and say I'm not going to be a part of that may be a difficult decision. When when the shortcut is is the easier thing of joining in. And the, these things may, uh, Satan will tell you to, if you take the shortcut, man, you'll, you'll, you'll feel better. But what, what's really true is that taking the shortcut does have its consequences. And sometimes making the right decision is actually really difficult, but it's better to be obedient to the father. But notice the first part of that verse in, in James chapter 4, verse 7. It says, it says, resist the devil who will flee to you. But before that, it says, submit to God. Here's why. No, it, it, this start submitting, uh, submitting to God is the first step we need to take before we can resist the devil. 
The only way that we can submit to God is by first embracing the gospel in our lives. You will not have power over Satan until you are made right with God. As we said earlier, the only way that we can be made right with God is the gospel. And that Jesus gave up himself on a cross. That Jesus took the wrath, he took the sin, and he died the death we deserved on a cross. But three days later, Jesus rose again so that we could have victory and have new life in Christ. And that is the only way that we're able to have victory over Satan is to trust the one who has victory over Satan. We can't do it on our own. So I, I encourage you, if you have if you've never made that decision in your life to, to trust Jesus, I encourage the, uh, to you to make today the first day where you say, I'm giving my life over to Jesus. I need to submit to God because I cannot fight the devil on my own. I cannot fight Satan. I cannot fight sin on my own. I need a savior. So if you want to do that, if you would like to make that decision, comment on our YouTube page. You can email us at, at the email address at the end, or you can text decision to 57711. Decision to 57711. And we'll get in touch with you to see how we can better serve you on the spiritual journey. We know that the gospel is what holds power, and we want you to be able to walk away from today having the power of the gospel. Well, thank you for joining us this, this week as we continue, uh, as we finished up this, this series called Church in the Wild. I hope that has been, uh, has been a blessing to you. And if there's anything that you, uh, that we can do, uh, to serve you, let us know. All right. My email address is at the end and we would love to hear from you. Thank you guys.